are we on? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let's make the phone check. Lights. Lights. Cameras. <laughs> this is Swanky. This is Lifestyle. This is Culture. Welcome to the social center of everything culture. Culture Daily. That's how we bring it to exactly 14 minutes past nine here on Culture Daily. Hope you've enjoyed your Monday so far. How was your weekend? That's a big ultimate question that I want to ask you. I don't know how you spent your weekend, but our weekend was L-I-T. You know how you're writing emojis, right? When you put lit there, uh, it just turns into a flame. I don't know if you've tried it before. Maybe like fire or something turns into a flame. And that's the best way we could. <laughs> I wish you could turn ourselves into emojis and have flames all over our heads here. But it's all good, though. It was a good weekend. We'll bring you extensions of the show itself that happened inside Alajo later on here on 3 Music TV so make sure you stick and stay and watch the channel we'll bring you more updates on that jump on our socials and get more updates there as well more action from the weekend and uh, don't forget the show is probably uh, sponsored by Yango this morning Yango is saying that listen you can get affordable and safe rides on Yango if you download the app right now ASAP like right now your first three rides you get a huge discount on there so hurry 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 uh, don't forget to also brush your teeth day and night with Pepsodent Cavity Fighter. Now, guess what? It's actually very affordable. It comes in various pack sizes. The Ejaqua pack, that's about 120 grams or so. Um, it's out there for you. They have, they have the large family pack and you can also get the smaller sachets for 65 and 12 grams, uh, 12 grams sachets. So it's affordable. Don't forget, please, it's fortified. Like we say, it's fortified with pro fluoride and micro calcium ingredients that seals tiny and invincible holes in your teeth. So brush your teeth day and night with Pepsodent Cavity Fighter. And whilst you're at that as well, quick reminder, Telecell is here. So we're talking about it heavily now. Telecell is here you can do business that big business idea that you have can be turned into success stories via telesale business um, you want to send money telesale cash is the optimum way to go and choose um, use telesale now like they say telesale connecting energies there's more i'll tell you later on on the show but right now the big convo as you've been waiting for the man is live live in the studio with us the man they call the other half of the group kgpm we cut into two and today we have the pm live in the studio pm welcome from the long Thank you very much. Thank into you. The thank heat. you. <laughs> into the heat. The into proper the, heat. In, into the heat we go. <laughs> Hell on earth. <laughs> Charlie, welcome. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It has. I know anytime I touch base, I mean, I get into town. I know they feel link up, but yeah. Charlie, uh, your moves plenty too much. No, 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 no plenty. I try. You try. <laughs> you. What, what, what brings you really to Ghana? Family. So my mom's yeah. um, birthday was last month. Oh, yeah. I so saw, I saw we, a video. we came to surprise her. Yeah. Oh, she didn't know you were. You, you, you she didn't coming. know the kids were coming. Oh. So that was a massive surprise for her. And it was important to us. Oh, mm. man. Listen, once we have you today, let me squeeze this thing out of you. I did so so you, saw, you guys saw the video we played earlier on. Um, the first video we played earlier on. That was an old classic. What Obra 4 was uh, KGPM uh, and, uh, and a host of other artists on there. You saw that video. Now, that's a long time ago. Now, that song, imagine this. You have a hit song, boom, hits the market. Everyone is talking about it. You know how hard it is to get a hit song, right? And then you jackpa. <laughs> then you leave out. You know, somebody asked me this question years ago, and my, my answer was, sometimes good things happen at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, right. The hit came. Uh -huh. um, we did a few shows. But then KG had, uh, I think he had his green card just about then. And then oh. I went to go to uni. Yeah. And, you know, that was the end of it. But it was around the time where if you tell your parents that you're, going to, you're not going to go to uni, you do music instead, they'll look at you like, Charlie, what's wrong with you? So obviously I had to go and pursue that, you know, that dream. Did you ever feel like if you had gone on to do the music in Ghana with KG or alone, considering the, the economic conditions the music industry scene the industry what was happening because i mean hammer was just peaking his you know yeah uh, with his uh, uh his beats as well and pigeon music which you were doing uh you know part of the people that i see the pioneers uh i mean there were others who was before eddie blay i think eddie I'll give it to eddie blay. yeah um, eddie i think blay. we made it more commercial yeah more commercial yeah. per se yeah yeah but eddie blay salute the godfather did, did you ever think that if you had stayed on it could have been yes i mean every now and school. again it, it, it crosses my mind um music is always at the forefront of everything i do um and i i've always thought 
what if I'd stayed? You know, would we have carried on recording? Would we still be relevant today? It's difficult to say, but uh, at the same time, no regrets. Um, I like the path that I've gone on. I ended up being a DJ, which I didn't think I would. Um, and I actually enjoy doing that. I like putting up events uh, and I'm still recording. So mm -hmm. it's just, I feel like it might have been frustrating recording and living in this country where the systems don't work enough for you to earn, you know, you royalties. <laughs> royalties, the right amount of money. Um, and I was saying earlier to you, yeah. you know, how, how many times I hear Stone Boy and... Yeah, you make this man happy. You know, with, with, with nothing to show for it. So, and in the UK, I get calls to say, your song is just being played on this radio station. And I'm like, it's nice, but I, I'm getting nothing for it. Yeah. You know, so I think it would have been frustrating, but people have made it work. I think the world has become a smaller place now. Social media is making people cut across different... Um, countries easier. Let me ask this question. What makes people who, um, creatives, before, I mean, I won't speak for businessmen, but creatives, yeah. what makes creatives who leave the country look back and want to come back home? Seeing the success of others. Break it down. Um, so when, when you look back and, and you look at the people who are doing well, who are recognized across different platforms in the world, you you see yourself as that could have been me, you know. Um, because and, you know, Jean, Jean Jean Fire said something similar. Mm -hmm. She's back home, you know, to get in touch, get in touch and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I want I want that, like you're saying, I just break it. She's back to home to get in touch. What to re record again? Record. Um, Stay grounded. Yeah. You know, uh, still being the. It, it's difficult if things. you're doing music. If you're doing if you're making Ghanaian music, uh -huh. you're better off being in Ghana, no doubt. Um, you can't be there one foot here where you are not appearing for shows or um, events, mm -hmm. you know, or interviews and things. You need to be seen. So I think it, those people who leave would always look back and kind of wish we had remained so that we, what, you know. What, when you say that, guys, I think this, this, this comes up with a very interesting conversation. When you say that, um, there's, a, there's heavy debate on the influence or the impact that traditional media can do yeah. as opposed to the new the new face of digital media. Can't anyone make it out there just heavily based on digital media and non reliant on traditional media? Do you know anybody your, 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 your you know opinion worked for? I can name I can name so many who left and that was the end of it. Um uh, with good intentions, you know, better life out there, you know, we'll still try and record and the life takes over. You know, the, th the thing yeah. is, once you leave the country, and I always say to people, once your, your first bill comes with your name on it, mm. you are in the system. <laughs> <laughs> you go work, huh? <laughs> and you won't find enough time to, to do the things that you're actually passionate about, unless those things are actually feeding you and your family. I like that. When the yeah. first bill comes with your name on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once that first bill comes, whether I it's like a mobile phone or you're, you're no, but, 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 what, what, what do you think about that, Sue? Because, you know, we've been talking about, you know, um, some have said that, listen, uh, in encouraging any new artists, don't stress much with, with traditional media. Mm -hmm. You guys have lost it. Like, you do DJs on radio. Uh, host on TV, you're not a thing any longer. It is traditional media that's that will never the go. That would never go. It's, I think a good marriage of both works. Um, I don't think um, artists can do without radio airplay. Having said that, I know A and R's now would look at artists based on how much following they've got, mm -hmm. how much traction they've got in the streets, and things like that. Um, but at the same time, radio cuts across so many boundaries, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that's why. In, I don't know how many radio stations in this country I cannot keep up anymore. It must be, there's something good about it and that's mm -hmm. why people, and every radio station has got their own listeners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there mm -hmm. must be something good about traditional uh, media as well. But you can't take away the fact that social media has really helped a the, lot of artists. Yeah, there is, a, there is a, um, a trending conversation on this Play Ghana agenda um, to promote you know, more uh, Ghanaian content mm. and Ghanaian music. Yeah. What is the music landscape, the Ghanaian music landscape like in, in, in the UK? Now, specifically the UK, and it's good you are, you are, you are based there now because um, once upon a time, the validation of a Ghanaian artist was to travel out there you know, you've gone to Germany, you've gone to play in... in, in and the UK became the, 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 the thing, the place. Yeah. You know, what is it now as we speak? Um, there's not enough Ghanaian music played out there. I can't lie. Um, what is the reason? 
as a D, I can only speak as a DJ, and sometimes I find it difficult to place myself as a DJ or an as an artist. Um, as a DJ, I know lots of people say, why are you playing Nigerian music? Or why are you playing, you know, I play for who has paid to come and watch me play. <laughs> so I'm not going to be intentional about playing Ghanaian music just because it's an agenda. But I've charged people to come in into, to, into a show to have fun. And they're, they're listening to Ghanaian music, but not having fun. Hmm. However, they're going to have fun. If it means it's only Ghanaian music and that's working, I will play Ghanaian music. But I'm not going to be intentionally playing only Ghanaian music. Okay, so is now there, let's drill down to this Ghanaian music thing. Oh, oh, sorry, Lenny, you ask us first. Is there a crowd, a ready audience, you know, for solely Ghanaian music? I there mean, is. should there be the case? There is. As to whether that crowd is big enough to, to make a massive impact, I'm not sure. Um, but I do, so I do a, a show called Pimpinis where I play <laughs> old High Life. So I'm talking Boga High Life, Charles Amwa. Oh, I like and, the uh, name. Yeah, so <laughs> all those people, then, then we come down to um, Hip Life. Mm -hmm. So we do the Bookbacks and the um, Dogos and the KGPMs and mm -hmm. things like that. And people love it because they hardly go out to hear these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, but those numbers do not reflect compared to an Afrobeat show where is lots of Nigerian music being played, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, so there's an audience out there, but it's not big enough. There's a, a Ghanaian you, audience out there. Yes, a, Ghani think that a Ghanaian audience that actually appreciate Ghanaian music. Indigenous mm -hmm. Ghanaian music. There's, there's, there's an audience out there. Amachi Dede sells out when he goes there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, Kodrenchi, there are people ready to watch them. Would it, would it be safe to say sorry, Cyril, sorry. <clears throat> would it be safe to say that that Ghanaian audience that's exclusively um, uh, patronizing Ghanaian music is patronizing Ghanaian music from a certain era? Yes, I think it's the nostalgic feeling it gives. So it's not necessarily about the Ghanaian music. The driver mainly, like you're saying, is the nostalgia. I and think especially so. because it's for people who are safe to say homesick to an extent. That's right. So I mean, a lot of these people may have left the country just when some of these songs were, were yeah. booming. Yeah. So it just takes them, takes them back. Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, there's always a few songs that seep through that, that make it work. Yeah. We're talking like Quick One Auntie. If I play Quick One Auntie in a club today, everybody goes crazy. Um, Black Sharif, uh, mm -hmm. Has got a massive fan Coconuts base. Coconuts by Amarado. Sorry, Amarado's Coconuts. Correct. Okay. Yes, okay. the remix with with Famia. It's. Yeah, I yeah. think the Ghanaians love it there, and even the non Ghanaians love it as well. So, so then, what? Well, let's drill it down. Is, is it the content now? You know, um, um, Dennis uh, from Kwaba Yuki once, yeah. you know, in the conversation said that Jay, look, even if even if I possibly pack a lot of Ghanaian artists into one auditorium, we just maybe might still find it hard to pack those auditoriums. Is it a matter of content? And it's, sometimes he, she says, I struggle with um, trying to get artists um, to give me a show at the party in the park, you know? So it becomes quite difficult, you know, because of the catalog of music that you're looking for from the artist to stay on stage, you know, after paying such a heavy bill to fly yeah. the artist in, yeah. accommodation, food, yeah. and all, all of that, you know, and, um, you're looking for an artist that can sustain you for a, a, a bit because maybe you may in the past because i think he's done 20 years now right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so 25 years 25 years and you know he may have brought all the a-listers who again are going to bring to the people again you know and it, it comes it boils down to even that the person you're bringing is has he has he or she got a catalog of music to last you for let's talk about the content of Ghanaian music um do you feel that our music it, it, you know, maybe we may have certain shortfalls that doesn't give us the reason to be able to hold a crowd when you are jammed. Because, you know, your, your earlier statement, you had mentioned that, and I think I, I picked something off what you're saying, and DJ Ashman as well said something similar, that it's very difficult to hold, uh, sometimes hold a party with just your Ghanaian music. music. Yeah, yeah it, it becomes a certain point, it gets still, and the audience now starts craving for foreign content. I think that's, that's exactly what it is. I, I don't think it's content per se. It's to do with what the people want. What the people want currently is Afrobeats, which is heavily Nigerian. Uh, one of the reasons is because population plays a massive part. Um, in every city you go in the world, you find more Nigerians than... But the UK used to be a Ghana stronghold. Oh, yes, it, it still is. I mean, so, when they're talking about two African countries in the UK, it's Ghana and Nigeria, mm. which makes me proud in a sense because we are such a small country small population compared to Nigeria, mm -hmm. but we are still in the conversation. Do, I, do, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So 
I think it's what the people demand. That's it's not the content because I think there's good music out there. Lo- there's lots of good music out there um, from Ghana, but I think people give uh, DJs at least give the audience what they want. I know you mentioned um, Amado's Kwekwa Nancy, yeah. right? But with the nostalgia you speak of, you know, when you talk about playing songs from back when, yeah. right? Do you think, you know, to an extent, maybe some way, somehow, you know, the ball has been dropped, you know, when it comes to that type of quality of music, although, um, you know, the music creation and music making, you know, equipment, you know, have improved mm. um, a lot. So are you, are you talking about the, the quality? The quality, yeah. I mean, when I think about some of the producers Ghana has, I think we've got some of the best producers in Africa. Um, back in the day when Kill Beat started making music, um, I always wanted to go into his studio and just watch his um, thought process. And I wanted to understand why Nigerian artists back then would go to Kill Beat to, to record. And then I realized that it's because the quality of some of these Ghanaian producers are unmatched. Mm-hmm. So the quality is there. Yeah, I think uh, Peter's also said that before. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the quality is there. Lots of these people, KY used to mix and master lots of these uh, Nigerian artists' mm-hmm. uh, music. Um, there's one thing that uh, I've, I've noticed in the Ghanaian music sector. There's no uh, investment and it's nobody's fault. I think as an artist, you want a manager who can write a proposal to you, you've got money, um, and say, look, I've got an artist, his name is PM. Um, if you give me uh, five million CDs in five years, I will make you... Serial your language. 300 million CDs. Mm. <laughs> Those businessmen may not be music enthousi- enthusiasts, but they are businessmen. Yeah. They want to hear these conversations. They want to hear these figures being mentioned. Then they would be interested in putting money in. But I don't think we've got people like that who are actually out there proposing these things to these rich, rich men out there. Whereas in Nigeria, investing in this music is a massive thing for lots of people. You okay. know. So let me, let, me, I'm taking it, let me take this away for a second. We'll come back to I know that will spark serious interest, but let me just calm him down <laughs> <laughs> on that. He fights that so much. He says, I love the artist. Hey, listen, your, your last statement on, um, on one of our shows, he said, before we ended the artist manager conversation, he said five, um, he's worked with five artists who, yeah. what do you say? He said he yeah. with five artists. Five artists who wanted, who were driven by their ego and didn't care about what mattered. Yeah, yeah. you and, said you uh, had proposals, something for five yeah, artists. Proper, like, brand development, growth, mm. investment, all that. And they were not interested. They wanted to blow on TikTok. And, well, TikTok wasn't a thing. They wanted to blow on Twitter. Right. And blow on online. Yeah. And people, they come my SoundCloud. So what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take us back to, now, like, again, the, 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 the UK was, or London, I don't know, but was a stronghold for Ghanaian music. Um, in some quarters, people have said that um, the people in the diaspora are able to influence the music. Um, so when uh, maybe Davido's song hits in Nigeria, yeah. outside Nigeria, it's also amplified because everybody around the world, all Nigerians around the world are, are singing it. And they're very insistent. And I, very insistent. I tell okay. you what, when I'm DJing and um, is a Nigerian party, mm-hmm. I get nervous sometimes. Oh. As a DJ, you don't want too many requests. And I don't like people who are insistent, you know, mm. This is I'm playing this. I'll play that later. But they'll stand there and wait for you to play the song. <laughs> yeah, and and it's I get. But, yeah, but yeah. then I sit back and think, I, I rate that. I respect that. Like there's hardly any Ghanaian who go and say, "Play me Kukwa Nancy," and they'll stand there and wait for you to play it. If you're not playing it, don't give you twenty pound or hundred pound. The Nigerians do it. Mm. So the DJs are willing. Even the non-Nigerian DJs are willing to play the music. You know, and luckily the music is good. So it's easier to just... Do you encounter Nigerian DJs? Uh, not many, but yes, I do. And, and I, I wonder what their stance is when it comes to uh, playing homegrown music, whether they, are, they also diversify and, you know, push intentionally, would push other uh, music from other countries. Or no, I mean, th- th- honestly, the Nigerian DJs I know would play Ghanaian songs that they know the crowd... Like no. Mm-hmm. So, oh, why? That's such a classic. I don't know what that is, but in yeah, London, um, it's almost any party, Ghanaian or Kofin Tea or Foreign Ponta, Ghanaian or Nigerian or African party, they know the song. It's, it's a very catchy song. Mm. So, Nigerian DJs will play songs like that. They'll play You May Kiss the Bride by Boli. 
Um, Still in this day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, nice. they, they play these songs. Um, they'll play Black Sharif, and especially after he had the remix with Burner Boy on there, they, they took to him. Uh, Sugar Kane, when Sugar Kane came, it's, people thought he was Nigerian. Nigerian DJs played play the song because it fit in well with their kind of music. If the demand is there for an, an, uh, Nigerian, um, a Ghanaian hit song, they'll play it. Has the disease of us, sorry, has, has the disease of, of <coughs> us, you know, uh, constantly um, listening to foreign songs, has it also reached the Ghanaians, <laughs> the diaspora, <laughs> especially in the UK? Of regarding the nostalgia that you know all Ghanaian songs might come with, yeah. also patronizing foreign music. Um, I don't think it's as bad. I think over there, the um, so for instance, on commercial radio stations in the UK, you would hardly hear Ghanaian songs. Um, and I'm talking about the one extras and things. Is it because of DJ Abrams here not being on air any longer? I don't think so. But even when he was there, there was a lot of Nigerian music being played because th that was the time of Oliver Twist and, uh, you yeah. know, um, Timaya back in the day. So there were Ghanaian songs. I know he pushed um, Sakodia really hard when he came out, mm -hmm. you know, because it was worth pushing. Mm -hmm. um, but we just consume what's being fed to us and what is being fed to us is the big songs which unfortunately or fortunately are nigerian mm. that's it's we can't run away from it so how do we change this idea how do we how do we, we get intentional about this i, I, I just i just want to ask um identity is a big part of music consumption right people resonate simply because they can identify mm. does ghanaian music has that you have that sorry does ghanaian music have that unique um, identity that would allow that allows the fans to easily connect because this assumption that people always confuse Ghanaian music for Nigerian music. It happens locally, it happens in America, it happens in the UK, mm. it happens in Russia, right? right? So it, there's a problem. Yeah. And as a DJ who plays the music and yeah. it's sonically, you know, astute, do you think we have our own music identity? No, we don't. Um, and we are very volatile in, in, in a sense. I said this sometime back, sorry, I have to echo it. No, we don't because, <laughs> because I think I, when you think about it, the amount of times we've shifted from one genre that was about to blow or that was doing well. I mean, when Azonto came, I think we could have held onto Azonto like our lives depended on it. Mm. it. It did, actually. And and then, <laughs> well, it did, actually, yeah. And then after that, when the slower tempo music, so, uh, I mean, Azonto is about 125 BPM. Mm -hmm. So that was, our, that was our thing. Then Al-Qaeda came, which was about 110. 110. Um... So those two things, I feel like, were our sound. Everybody would know that and would as associate that with dancing. Mm -hmm. When the slower 101 BPMs and 100 BPMs from Nigeria came, we all started making music to sound like them. You know, so that's when we lost our identity. Mm. I feel like there should have been artist gatekeepers who, who would just say, look, I'm not going to change the kind of music I make. This is who I am and this is what I'm going to do regardless. At the end of the day, they also have to eat. So I guess they're looking at what the masses would want and then, you know, they shift that way. But we don't have a, an identity, mm. the long and short of it. We don't. I, I mean, like, I can just imagine. Um, <laughs> because I know at a point in time, look, the, the, the UK was a, was a place where, like I was saying earlier again, yeah. that, you know, if you're an artist, perform, go there, take a, f a flight, get in and out, and just the fact that you go and come is enough for... Uh, you know, I'm wondering what has caused the decline in interest for some local artists now even seeking to, well, would you bother whether they go, to the, they go to London or back? I think people still want to. I think people still get excited about performing in London. You cannot take away the Afrobeat, I call it the Afrobeat hub of, the, of Europe. The yeah. UK has been yes. a very important part in Afrobeat going that far. Yeah. America has only caught on very recently. Yeah. Um, but the UK has always been there, and thanks to people like Abranti and things like that. Um, but I don't think people don't want to perform in the UK. Or I don't think they don't rate performing in the UK. I think everybody wants to do Indigo. Um, well, we, which will be coming to, I was nearly coming to that. But yeah, anyway. I think people, people want to sell out Indigo and come back and say, look, we've, I've done Indigo. Whereas... I don't think you can say the same for Scandinavian countries or, or even France. You know, I don't know what, what, what massive um, theatres they have there. But 
people still want to come, Ghanaian artists still want to come and perform in the UK. I think it's important. Sure, you're going to say. Yeah, I was just going to say that we we kind of um, make an error when we speak about the UK music scene like it's only us. The beginning of British music, commercial British music was majority pop. Yeah. Then it was pop rock. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then it was pop rock. Mm-hmm. Then there was raga. Yeah. With um, Jack and Demon and yeah. General Levy and all that. Yeah. So as much those eras that we used to go there and have the the, 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 the slice, the biggest slice of the pie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was literally very little competition mm-hmm. musically, period. Yeah. But over three decades, I'm talking from maybe like from 1990 till now, mm-hmm. about three decades, there have been new genres. There's grime, there's... There's all these things that I've added on. And every time there's a new genre, that kind of captures a little percentage of the market. Yeah. So what's left for African music gets smaller yeah. by the day. Yeah. Right? So in 1995, yes, if you go to the UK, people already are in search of new music. Yeah. So you'll get an audience simply by virtue of the fact that you, know, you are you, new. Do you know what that was? So in 1995... People didn't find Africans didn't find it cool to be African. African, exactly. The cool people in the UK were the Jamaicans. Mm. So the lingo was Jamaican. Even if you're African, you would sound Jamaican, Jamaican because you don't want people to identify you as African. African. Mm. In the same way, their music resonated with the Jamaican, the black audience in the UK. Yeah. So that's where Django was was there. Yeah. Um, Bashman is, mm. is massive, um, but. Over time, when, and I want to say, music and sports has made Africans in the UK more proud of being Africans now. It was never like that then. Yeah, there was an awakening. So, there was an awakening, you know, and now <coughs> people, even non-Africans, want to associate with, with, with Africa, you know. But that is what has shaped the Afrobeat um, scene now. Because now people are not afraid to blare out Afrobeat songs in their cars. Back in the day... You, you listen to it low because you don't want people to know where you're from. Now it's really cool. Mm-hmm. You know, Jamaican mm-hmm. DJs are playing Afrobeat, you know, and I think Afrobeat has actually taken over things like Bashman, which was the black music, you know, and even UK Afro Swing, which is a mixture of Afrobeats with the UK twang. But even that doesn't really, it's not as massive as Afrobeat it mm-hmm. is today, you know. Yeah. And uh, we, we forget the generational um, dilution. Yeah. Right. Bashment was big in the mid '90s because those were first, second generation Jamaicans. That's mm-hmm. right. Their kids today, yeah, are more British than Jamaican. Yeah. Right. Same for the Ghanaians. The Ghanaians yeah. who were there in 1996 were first generation, second generation Ghanaians. Now Kwame is not a Ghanaian. Kwame mm-hmm. is more British <laughs> than Ghanaian. Yeah. So you might see that there's 10 million black people in the UK, by psychologically influence wise, okay. blah blah blah. But you, but you I probably thought, want to listen okay. to it, Sharon and Chill. You know All right, so let me, let, let, let's <laughs> come to the BTL space, the, the underground. People like Dennis, Aquaba UK, Alordia yeah. and Co, who are engineering uh, events. Yeah. We are, I know the O2 has become the, the fill it and you are it. Yeah. <laughs> but we've had platforms like Ghana Party <clears throat> in the Park and, you know, uh, the Ghana Music Awards. Let yeah. me even reference Party in the Park because of the numbers. Yeah. Huge numbers that draw a lot of Ghanaians. Yeah. I mean, you're talking... And non-Ghanaians. Oh, and non-Ghanaians. Yeah. Well, 5,000, 8,000 people. Yeah. I don't know if he's hit 10,000 yet, but I'm sure he's, he well has hit 10,000 people. Enough to cause a stir and an influence and change the mindset of... Um, a lot of people who might think that Ghana music isn't penetrating, you know, in, in that space. You might also think that it changed the mindset of people who might say that, listen, if I can't feel old, how, how might O2 takes how many people? Uh, O2 itself takes 20,000. 20, I mean, and if you're doing... is smaller. Yeah. So if you're doing half, yeah. at a part in the park at 10,000, yeah. then that should be our validation now. I don't no. know if... He, if, if it, it so why uh, isn't it turning the, the wheels enough? I the, think if for us to get news that ex, ex, sorry, let me finish yeah. it. Mm-hmm. That um, maybe R Two B is performing a party in the park this year. That should be a big deal, and because it was a sellout, it should be a big deal as as Ashake performed as it, the no, O2. It's two different so let's things. understand it. Let's it's understand the dynamics. Things. Yeah, party in the park is called first of all Ghana party in the park. Yeah, Ghana party in the park. Yeah, that alone is almost boxing it into a Ghanaian thing. Also, it is not a concert. It's people selling kente, people pounding fufu, people selling African food, people grilling meat. 
is everything Ghanaian, but it's not necessarily a concert. The people who perform at those events is just the icing on, on the cake. It's just a bonus. Whereas Indigo, you're paying to go and watch a concert and that's it. Do you understand? So even an artist would want more validation at, at Indigo compared to Party in the Park. Not to say that they wouldn't want to perform, f perform there because they're still going to reach out to a significant number of, of Ghanaians in the UK. But Indigo is more internationally accepted. Ghana Party in the Park, we know it. We are Ghanaians, so we know it. A lot of Nigerians don't even know Ghana Party in the Park. Uh, Congolese people may not know Ghana Party in the Park. But if Ashake or Sarkade was performing at Indigo, they'll hear about it because of the fact that it's Indigo. And even the, ad the advertising is different. The marketing for that concert is nothing compared to the marketing for Ghana Party in the Park. If, if they move the experience to pull off, if Dennis moved the experience to pull off a party in the park, well, not party in the park, but anyway, the brand party in the park, the brand Ghana party in the park, mm -hmm. to a concert in, in, in the O2, would it fill up? Will we um, fill 10,000? Yes. With, okay, with, with, no with how many artists? <laughs> <laughs> that was the point I was going to make. You see, the point but is, to do with the same number of these, are, these events, it's impossible. I think no. Black Sharif will, will fill Indigo. Solely. How is his music now? No. In the, in the, um, I think just when he was declining slightly, he had the song with... Uh, Do do black? And, and that has just shot him right back up because everybody waits for... You know sometimes DJs will play a song first minute and they... Yeah. You can't... You everybody have to play his part. Charlie. And everybody <laughs> sings I literally repeat the song and skip Odubo Do Blacks. I'm sorry though, I skip Odubo Do Blacks. It's a dope song. That's why I said no. Right, because we make this mistake all the time. Ghana party in the park, Aquaba UK. Uh, what's the other one you mentioned? I love this. Yes. Yeah, they are all points of activation. Yeah, you must have built the brand, grown the fan base before you have relevance on there. Yeah. So five thousand, ten thousand people coming to eat chichinga and fufu and light soup and meet their cousin from this side and that side. There's a lot of agendas on that day. <clears throat> if you've not built a brand that people subconsciously will start screaming at when they see you on stage, that's no way of coming to tell us about Ghana music. But also, to add to that, not everybody who is attending Ghana Party in the Park is going there to watch, watch the, artists. the artists. They're going there to mingle. Yeah. The boys are going to chase yeah. their girls. They're going there to it's, have fun. There's 10 different agendas. It's different agendas. Whereas when you're advertising an event at the O2, everybody is coming for that one agenda, for that one person. Do you understand? Ghana Party in the Park is slightly different. And I don't think you should change anything about it. It works perfectly. It's selling our culture to the rest the rest of the world. Mm. There's white people who go there. There's Nigerians who go there. There's, you know. Let, let's come back to this black hole conversation on, on, yeah. the, on the O2, the, the, on all the possibilities Not around. Not O2, Indigo. Indigo, sorry. You Only, like, I, I don't know I, I, if you I thought I'd be hearing from you on this. On I mean, this. For me, I, I think I'm more the possibility. I am interested in how the music is plugged in, in the UK now. Um, what are some of the marketing strategies that you have paid attention to that's given the audience an opportunity to tap into a new sound? Because I think that to fix the, to, to find a solution, we need to find the problem. Mm -hmm. And I don't live in the UK, so I can't speak much on it. Over here in Ghana, we know that, okay, you need to do a couple of dance challenges. You need to go to the radio stations. You need to go, you need to, go to the clubs and yeah. make sure that they have the song or rotation. Um, I think the last time when um, the brother came um, from the UK, uh, he was he was telling us about the BBC One Australia and all those things. Who was uh, that? Oh, is it uh, KJ Spio? It wasn't oh. KJ Spio. Was it uh, Art Article One? Was it Article One? No, no Article One. Someone was yes. telling us about how the Atumpan. Yes, yes. He was telling us about how even small girl, you don't know, the team became yeah. big in the UK and all that. What is the engineering process like right now in the UK if you want your song to be heard? I think it's the same as everywhere else. Um, TikTok. It starts uh, from TikTok. It starts from TikTok. I think um, we've got to a stage where our attention span is so short that anything less than, anything more than 30 seconds, you might lose them. Okay. Can you capture an audience with a part of your song that you believe is the best part of the song in 30 seconds? Okay. And put it out there, it would fly. 
So TikTok influences what the DJs are playing in the UK yes, clubs? Yes, 100%. And even on radio? Yes. So, uh, no, radio is different because uh-huh. uh, because radio is very structured. So radio, ob- they've got the producers. <laughs> That's the part that I laugh at our ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's very different. So, right. but I still think there's a slight influence in what the producers choose to air out. To playlist on radio. Based on TikTok and, and Instagram. Right. Um, but there are also other things. So BBC has a BBC introducing where they look out for new artists and new music. Okay. And if you're featured, you, they, they will ask you to submit. Every week there's an advert, submit your new music. If they select you, your music will get played on one of the BBCs. Okay. That's a very good platform because it might be BBC Radio 6, but there's still a good few million to listen to that. And that can catapult you to the next level and then expand your, oh. your, your fan base. All right. Um, but I think social media has been the major um, influencer. Influencer in the UK space. Okay. So now, when the music is building steam, yeah, what normally happens with the product or with the artist in question? Do they... Because I feel like, unlike the US where it's an open circuit, I feel mm. like in the UK it is community-based. So it's, it's very close. Like you need to know a group of people to lead another group of people to lead another before the expansion every, is every industry has got the pluggers every industry has got gatekeepers mm-hmm. it's not this it's not different so what is UK. it like in the uk especially um, with the with the african south the afrobeats music <coughs> the the people you you see and hear about are the same people who would <coughs> make or blo- who make or break the dj and brad here said that not him anymore uh-huh that's but, what i wanted to find but, out but there's there's um adi Chopin. Okay. Uh, Shopsy. Okay. Shopsy, Shopsy do, yeah. He's a major influence in. I remember I sent him a song that I'd recorded, um, and he gave me some feedback. Hmm. And I never released the song until I was. I still haven't released it because I wanted to correct something. Right. But that sh- that goes to show how much influence he has. Back in the day, I wouldn't do it. I just feel like uh, my song is there. It's yeah, ready. It's I think it's good. Yeah. But I was. I found that his feedback was vital to me. Mm. And it's the same for so many other artists. And he's right. got the right association with Smade, who puts up Afro Nation right. all around right. the globe. Um, I don't know whether I'll call them gatekeepers, but they are a very they play a very major role in getting your music to the right places. Okay. Um, because they they will put up the concerts that would feed you. Okay. They'll put up the concerts that would expand your fan base. So, for instance, if you had a massive fan base in Ghana and then mm. you got to the UK through uh, Smade or, or whoever and mm. you put up a show and you were on there, that your 10,000 would go to another ten, an extra 10,000 or something in the UK because mm. y- he's taking you from, you know, one, one, one level to the next level. Right. Um, so these people are, are very vital. And you notice I mentioned two Nigerians. Yes. <laughs> I was hoping the Ghanaian name would pop up it's because I'm gonna, I was going to ask you a question about that, but you go ahead when you're finished out. I can't say there's any one Ghanaian off the top of my head <laughs> who plays a similar role. Dangerous. How, how, question however, before you continue. How long have you been in the UK? Uh, oh, somebody asked me that last week. I think 20 years. Okay, you can continue. And you can't think on top of your head. No, I okay. can't. Please go ahead. But also. Mm-hmm. You would find that there's there's very influential Ghanaians who are heading certain places. Hmm. So Def Jam O2 is O2. The twins, yeah, Alan and uh, his brother. They, are, I think they have a, they play a major role. Yeah, they're Ghanaian. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's so many other people <coughs> who have very uh, important roles in Spotify and places who are Ghanaian. Are they are they Ghan are they Ghanaian by? They are not Ghanaians who were born they are, uh-huh. Fourth, fifth generation Yes, Ghanaian. exactly. Yeah. What's so like exactly, yeah. Yeah, because but, but at the end of the day, they have a job. Uh, I don't blame them all the time. I know people assume that because a Ghanaian is heading this, then they should play only Ghanaian music. But we have spoken about the intentionality from some people who spearhead. Now, this, this let me just say, shouts going out to Kelly, uh, Kelly uh, our own Kelly. Um, Kelly Mensah. Kelly Mensah, yeah, who sometimes speaks about the the strategies and the uh, you know that sometimes some of these people some of these gatekeepers also look out for theirs and yeah. I, that's what i'm saying that do we we don't we don't get up see, and, uh, um, i know we shouldn't we shouldn't look this book in the pudding they, yeah. they, they, they work in theirs if yeah. they know that theirs will generate a certain the amount buzz. of traction yeah the buzz he's saving his job it's the buzz See, when i worked on radio i used to be very intentional about Ghanaian music yeah 
I wouldn't care. You send me a song. If I think it's good, I'll play it. It's easy on radio. Whereas when you're playing for events in an open space with people and seeing the initial reaction, you, you want to be careful. Not that the Ghanaian songs are not good. It might be good to me, but not to the next person. Mm. Because I'm saving my job. I've been booked to play an event. I have to play to make sure that it was worth the money you've paid me. Isn't it time for us to I, be bold and confident to change this narrative? I think, um, I mean, and I, I'm, I'm asking in all honesty for your answer, right? Yeah. The little observation I have made is that we focus so much on songs. And, and I'm, I've said this 10,000 times before this interview, so I even sound like a broken record. <laughs> We focus so much on songs. Tell it, condense it your, your voice though for compression uh, well, <laughs> well, well, because yeah. it be solid. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sexy, yeah. <laughs> we focus so much on songs that we don't build sustainable music brands. And for me, if I worked on in Spotify or Apple Music or whatever BBC, and some random Ghanaian J Foley had one hit song. Oh, some random right? Ghanaian J Foley bar. Mm. <laughs> Do you have a fit thing? you? <laughs> had uh, one hit song right like you said i need to keep my job i need to make sure whatever calls and polls i'm making is sustainable and the value i want them to celebrate me in three years at the promotion party and yeah, say yeah. if you hadn't brought in xyz this wouldn't have happened yeah but to go for these artists that are just focused on i get this song and are not doing the hard work the artist development the financial investment to build music brands yeah it'll be hard for anybody yeah you yeah, can yeah. see clearly how powerful the nigerian music brands yeah are but we have songs we go with that mp3 and the moment that trend dies it the dies. artist the management the whole team everybody is, dies everybody dies but i think we, we, we lack um management skill artist management skills in this country there's very i can't think of 10 managers who i can say have actually catapulted their artists to a level that we haven't heard of before. Whereas in other countries, the uh, this is how I see a manager. The manager should believe in the artist more than the artist himself. It's easier to sell somebody else than to sell yourself sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, like if like you day up, you know. <coughs> but this ma the manager can go the and story talk. Story of Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Yes. So the, uh, the manager can come here and come and sell you an artist before you even see the artist. You seeing the artist would add some substance to it. But the manager can come before you've even seen the artist. You've heard the music and he's told you why this guy should be played on your radio show. That means a conversation needs to be had. The, um, our, our, the um, role, the KPIs. Our, the KPIs our, most, of of our, a, most of our of managers, manager. they can all come for me after the show. Most of the managers in Ghana are more celebrity than some celebrities. That's my point. I was going to get and to that. And that is the problem. That is a right? massive problem. Their big prayer in being the manager, the roadie, the whatever, is that I pray that J. Foley changes my life. So they are not selling Jay Foley. Yeah, they they're are selling big, themselves. They're selling themselves. Yeah. I've met thousand managers in this Ghana, and everybody be star. Yeah, you understand, and yeah. that's the problem. Yeah, and for the life of me, I don't know a Nigerian manager. You understand, but let the me, job gets done. We've interviewed Nigerians who their managers were not in Ghana with them, but they showed up, coordinated stuff, and got stuff done. So our problem is systemic. It's like from what you're saying, investment, management, brand push, it, 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 and that has to be intentional. Play Ghana is one thing. You can be intentional about playing Ghana. Artist development is another thing that we have to be intentional about. And it might, I don't blame artists. Like, creative people are not always the smartest people in terms of finding the right, making the right business decisions, um, developing themselves. They, there's, there's, there's some artists who know how to pen a good song. Mm -hmm. You can't take that away from them, but that's where it ends. And it's fine. That's why there's other people who help them do those Continue. things. Yeah. I look at um, Fuse ODG. Mm -hmm. Fuse ODG's manager, he's, he, he's always been his manager for, I don't know, the last 15 years or so. Yeah, um, Hackett. Hackett. Okay, yeah. So, Andre Hackett used to come and give me Fuse's CDs. This is before anybody knew Fuse was. His music was very different. And you come and stand there. Fuse wasn't anybody, but Andre would come and stand there and give me, he said, could you please play this guy's song? You know, and because I'm an artist, like a part of me feels like, Charlie, I need to try and play, even if it doesn't fit. But I can see the guy standing there waiting for me to play, so I play it. Mm -hmm. Then I went to watch um, Talib Kweli at uh, Indigo. Who opened for him? Fuse ODG. And I'm thinking, shit, I saw this guy, mm -hmm. you know, the other day <laughs> with his manager. Yeah. So when he blew up, I was always using Andre Hackett as the, that's, for me, that's my yardstick. Mm -hmm. If you cannot be like Andre Hackett and believe in, an art, in the artist and stick, stick with him when he's nobody, sorry. Yeah, you better off not doing And you've seen Hackett's persona and behavior right 
He's in. He's in a the fly on the wall. Yeah, he's in the back. Yeah. If they don't he's point to you, that that is Fuse's you know? manager. Yeah. You don't know, and yeah. we know what the others are like. <laughs> right, Charlie, make we call a spade a spade. I'm what was I'm I saying? A, I'm holding my. <laughs> hey, I'm, bro, what are you saying? I'm, I'm holding my guns. Hey, security. I'm wearing. I'm wearing. I'm wearing my helmet. No, my bulletproof. And my guns are. We don't know. We don't know what you're saying. So we don't. You don't know what is going on. For real, what you're saying, bro? Managers they enter room with more swag than artists. No, yeah, but. Guy, right, calm vibe. down and do your it's job. It's a vibe. Do <laughs> <laughs> what we do here. Our time is up. Let's just borrow. Let's just borrow some five minutes to exit. Okay, to, okay let's go. I want to find out from PM. With as long as um you've been you know in the UK, you know, you mentioned twenty years. Um, you've also mentioned some gatekeepers who are pushing you know so hard, Smade and um Adishope, yeah. right? Have you considered you know also getting into the space? Having been an artist, um, a DJ, you know, you've played in the space mm. for a while. No, I haven't. Um, I don't think I've got the headspace for it. And I think everybody has got a calling. I don't know whether that's mine. Um, I'm a creative mm. guy. Um, and I just, I just love the art of making music. I, I love the art of production. I like the art of playing music. I'm not sure whether that's my thing. Um, having said that, if the opportunity comes for me to be able to uh, elevate an artist who I believe would take Ghana further, I would drop everything and and do it a hundred percent um yeah that's why i wanted to hear wanted to <laughs> okay let, let, okay so, so i was i wanted Quickly, to find please. out um do you think we are not making enough crossover music or it's just an issue of marketing it's an issue of marketing uh it's an issue of numbers i don't know what's crossover music ashake comes out with uh, a sound that was very different from everybody's sound. Um, apart from the way he backs himself, um, he's singing in a language that lots of us don't understand. Um, and he's going against the grain in the production choices. I don't know if you've noticed that. Yeah. Like, when I listen to some of the production, I'm thinking, who would have thought that? Yeah. And But we've accepted him. Um, and rightly so, because they marketed him very well. Um, and unfortunately, they've got the numbers to show for it. I always say that it's not because there are some songs that can stand toe to toe with a Ghanaian song, and I mean co I'm comparing Nigerian and, and Ghanaian music. There's some there are certain songs that will stand toe to toe with them, but the Nigerian song will fly mainly because of numbers, uh, and the numbers are what convince uh, businessmen to invest more because they know that there's 10 million people we can sell this to, whereas the Ghanaian businessman is thinking, quick one, Nancy. Mm, I don't know, maybe. Uh, a few thousands mm. is not enough for him to invest. So, and it, and and um, um, you mentioned marketing because you need uh, ma marketing investment is a major role in in getting music out there. Okay, so, yeah, just, so I'm quickly. I, I ask this question because I know people often make it look like there isn't a competition, quote unquote, you know, when it comes to music. But with every conversation we have, clearly there is a competitive market. That there is. You know, um, regardless of being brothers or sisters or cousins, um, you know, our cousins should not be offended, quote unquote, when we have conversations like this because it's a competitive market advantage. Because you can have a good Ghanaian song and have a good Nigerian song, yeah. But the investor will go for the, the, the good Nigerian song because he is guaranteed an OI, ROI, yeah, right. Not because the Ghanaian song is not good enough, That's because right. the Ghanaian song hasn't taken the risk of investment. Yeah. That okay, let me push this as much as possible and see what will come. Nigerians investors will be willing to push the money 100%. regardless of whether they make profits or loss. Yeah. You know. And so the last question I'm gonna ask yourself is do you think real quick in the next few years, do you think that it will be more difficult for Ghanaian songs to have its global success? No, it won't be it will be easier. I think we're learning a lot from, from our neighbors. Mm. I think it will be easier. We just have to keep going hard at it. We just need to explain to people that you need to put money into music to get, to the, get it back. To get, to it, get, it, back. get it back. Um, wrap us up with this. This is going to be a very tough one. You mentioned Black, Black OS 1. Um, but we're looking forward to, since the O2 now has become the, <laughs> the, valid, the new validation <laughs> for you to become a global artist. Mm, Grammys are tired. Yeah, 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 Grammys are tired. I know, right? <laughs> Who would be your best fit? for uh, an investor to use, a Ghanaian artist to use to fill the O2 for, so that we can all go and say that, ha, ah, finally, with all the marketing, with all the marketing that we can put, all the arsenal that we can put behind it to, to, to fire, 
who? Which one Ghanaian artist? For me, it's the fact that he has to think. <laughs> I know, it's that sad. That artist, eh? Called Think. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stone Boy. Today, let me sleep in this house. Today, I'm feeling merciful. Don't worry, you can sleep. <laughs> Stone Boy. I would say Stone Boy. He's got everything um, in terms of... Um, he's got the mindset to go where he wants to go. Um, he's, <laughs> he's got the brand. Um, and, I, and I say brand, like, even how Stone Boy dresses, I think... Compared to some other artists, he he's all the way up there when it comes to his dress Into sense. The future, we I mean, I so, so Stone Boy, I, 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 I'd say. Give me your, love, um, you know, your last release. Let's talk about it real, real, real quickly. Your last, so, uh, yeah. So I have a so I have a mixtape, um, and I call it a mixtape because, like, back in the day, you know, hip hop music, you know, we just have a mixtape with songs that are not really ready for the yeah. album. So I have a mixtape which is hip hop. I'm not looking at anybody else. I'm just focused on doing my hip hop, yeah. which I'll be releasing when I get back. Okay. Um. So it's just. Um, songs that are not going to be everybody's taste but yeah. I like that on that note time is up my princess <laughs> says I have to cut it now thank you so much no thank you, Safe thank you very much for having back, me back into the UK <laughs> we are back again tomorrow here on Culture Daily and trust me the convo after this is going to be the real big conversation it's Jay Serial Lenny Olele and the PM here on the show and we are out